While there's a lot of science fiction out there about artificial intelligence taking over the world, getting it right for the warfighter and ensuring the trust of the American public is critical. Jane Pinellas is the chief of AI Assurance at DOD's Chief Digital and Artificial Intelligence Office. Jane, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. The Defense Department has released the Responsible AI Strategy and Implementation Pathway. What's in it? So what's in it is very precise guidance to the entire Department of Defense on how to actually operationalize and implement the Responsible AI principles. Anything from how we build Responsible AI into our acquisition life cycle uh, to how we train our workforce to be champions for Responsible AI um, and all of the other tasking to multiple, I think there are over 60 tasks uh, in that document to the different organizations in the DOD for how to shepherd implementation of Responsible AI across. And, and is it the U.S. government that's the first government out there to actually um, put out ethical AI principles? Uh, the United States Department of Defense is the first Department of Defense to adopt uh, ethical AI principles. Since then, multiple nations have followed. So let's talk about some of the principles. There, there are five total principles of ethical AI. One of them is for AI to be equitable, which means avoiding unintended bias. How do you do that? How do you avoid something that's unintended in the first place? Well, the, fir the first step is probably being aware of it, right? And let's talk about the word unintended. The fact that it's uh, unintended is important because there's some bias that is very intentional, right? If the system is going to perform uh, computer vision in the desert, then I want to intentionally bias it towards the desert, right? And, and, and that's good. Um, unintended bias, however, can occur, for instance, in the personnel systems, right? So that's probably the example that's easiest to imagine. Uh, if we're looking at an AI-based recommender for promotions, and certainly if we look back, we will see probably a disproportionate amount uh, of promotion, uh, promotions to allocated to men. Um, or allocated to people with a certain um, career track. Uh, and so if there is a desire to change that, if there are new, new values that are coming in, if there are more women, for instance, that we're uh, assessing into the DOD, then we need to make sure that the outcomes um, towards those uh, classes that traditionally are underrepresented uh, are treated fairly. Another principle is for AI to be traceable. What does that mean? So I want to make a, dis, um, a difference here between traceable and transparent, right? We don't necessarily need full transparency to trust our equipment. We all use Google Maps every day without having any idea exactly how it works. But traceable does mean that you know what data your uh, system was trained on. Traceable does mean uh, that you understand how it was trained and you know the limitations of it, uh, that we've communicated properly to the warfighter where their system has been tested and how well it works and that relevant personnel have relevant access to the system. For example, a tester like me would know a lot more about the system and have access to it throughout to test it at various stages of its development. So what's the difference between trust in AI and justified confidence, which is a term that you prefer? And why is it important to make that distinction? I think that distinction is important because trust is inherently something that's very poorly defined. If you Google trust, you will get over 300 definitions. And we want to be really objective in how we define it. Um, trust also, we talk about trust as something that is built um, and we don't want to encourage blind trust. We want to encourage justified trust or justified confidence, meaning that we only want the warfighter to trust the system where we have tested it and where we know that it works. The term confidence is actually a very technical term that is well-defined that speaks to if you were to repeat a certain action multiple times, how many times would that action be correct? Um, and so we prefer to use justified confidence over trust in this context. AI is sometimes referred to as brittle, right? So it, it, something that's brittle would break easily. What makes AI break so easily? Why is it brittle? AI depends entirely on the data on which it was trained, right? And so if that data are incomplete, if uh, those data are not as representative as you think of the proper operational environment, then AI becomes overfit to that very specific situation and you can have trouble generalizing to an operational environment that it encounters in the field. But also, the way that we build and the way that we train AI is often based on open source tools, uh, which means that people without 
access to your data and to your specific model actually have a lot of information about how you built your AI. And so we see a lot of interest in adversarial and cyber attacks towards AI as well. We've all seen examples of where uh, a stop sign with just a few stickers gets changed into a speed sign. Um, and that's something we really have to watch out for. Uh, you know, our adversaries eroding our trust in our own systems by being able to fool them in a variety of ways. I was going to ask you about adversarial uh, AI because it can be tricked in pretty easily, right? Uh, admittedly, yes. Uh, but on the other hand, now that we have that information, we can build our systems to be more robust and we can specifically design our system so that in situ uh, we have awareness for when the system is being attacked in an adversarial fashion um, and how to be resilient uh, to that type of an attack and how to recover from that type of an attack. What would you say are the major challenges to getting AI um, adopted quickly? What's hindering that progress across the department? There are a lot of challenges, but probably culture is the one that I want to address the most. Um, we in the Department of Defense uh, for decades now have been trying to be extraordinarily responsible with taxpayer dollars and be extraordinarily safe when it comes to uh, cyber and, and other types of adversarial actions. Because of that, we are now slower than we'd like and we're much more risk averse than we'd like. And I think uh, the truth is that um, when you accept, uh, when you design your system, uh, against the risk of, uh, you know, an enemy penetrating the system, for instance, uh, like a cyber resilience system, it becomes slower. And what you're doing at that point, and what we don't discuss enough, is you're accepting uh, the risk now of maybe not getting the best AI tools or not getting the best AI talent or the best AI system because you have now made your system so protected uh, against some of these other things. And so I, d I just think we need to do a better job of explicitly weighing those costs and benefits against each other. All right, Jane. Well, we're out of time, but thanks so much for coming by. Nice to talk to you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future Government Matters interviews.